Hi everyone, it's Grace. Welcome to Eating Peace this week. Really interesting questions have come in and um, as I'm teaching the Eating Peace core teleclass right now, we did the work on the body. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the work, I'm just going to say a little bit about how that works. So, there is a Judge Your Body worksheet and basically it's like the Judge Your Neighbor worksheet that is produced by Byron Katie. Write to me if you want a copy of it. Grace at workwithgrace.com but basically what you're doing in a most simple way is writing all your stressful, critical, judgmental thoughts down about your body. But in this case, when we look at the Eating Peace class, when we're sitting in there, we're looking at appearance. We're narrowing it down. I mean, you can find so much that's wrong with the body, right? You know, I have a scar here and it's aging there and there's some kind of sickness or disease or I've got pain in my hamstring or whatever. It can go on and on. And they aren't all related to this physical appearance and the stress and the pain around that. I learned it young, and you might have too, that something about the appearance of the body is suddenly exceptionally important. Like this was happening when I was about 13 or 14, maybe even a little bit earlier. Actually, I had a really significant moment of fear around being aware that my body was there and could look bad when I was only eight years old. And that's another, that's another story. What I wanted to share with you today, so, you know, in other words, what I'm saying is that when you're young, we are swimming in the soup of a world sometimes, surrounded by the parents that we have and the adults in our environment and the kids we have contact with, our friends, their parents, all kinds of people around depending on what culture you live in and how but they talk about your appearance and your performance and that it means you start to gather this means I am either failing or succeeding so we look at the appearance which you know in some ways you have little control over I know that you might think that's not true you have control over your appearance, at least the size and shape of yourself and how physically in condition you are and the weight that you are. But maybe you are thinking that you're more responsible than you actually are. I wanna give example though of how to do the work and what happened with me when I did this as I stared in the mirror at myself. I turned around facing my back to the mirror because the most fault that I ever found was with my thighs and my rear end was like, there's cellulite all over them. They're jiggly. They are never hard and tough and tight like ballerina thighs or gymnastics thighs. Like when I was younger and doing gymnastics all the time, I never had that kind of gymnastics body. They just are wrong. I work so hard. I um, do all this incredible physical conditioning and nothing changes, nothing works. This is the way they are. Poor me, ugly, disgusting, repulsive. I would never show that in public. I will never wear a bathing suit that shows this part of my body, you know, a thong or something. Oh my God, never, <laughs> you know, we're going to wear shorts and maybe even not that constant life commitment to covering that because other people could see it too and they might judge it in the same way I was judging it. So sitting and staring in the mirror, I thought I'm going to do the work on this. I am doing the work. I want to look and see what is actually true. Question number one, as you stare. So find that part of yourself that you think is ugly. Your weight, appearance, is it true? Are you sure that it is as ugly as you think it is? My answer is, oh yes. This has been going on for years. Of course I know it's true. Everyone thinks so too. The magazines, the movies, I see who's think, thought of as successful. I hear um, men, in my case, I was interested in what men thought, being interested in men myself. So I, I would hear what they said and, and they and what they were liking and think I better be like that and um, so I was buying we were all buying you know buying the buying the idea buying the conditioning yeah that really is important and it is ugly it's true it doesn't look good second question 
Can you absolutely know that that's true? Can you absolutely know that for sure beyond a shadow of a doubt? Are you positive this is ugly? I found I could not answer that question at, with a yes. I said no. I don't know. My eyes see incorrectly. They see with, with stressful stories. You know, a bird doesn't see this body and think, oh my God, that's disgusting. You know, a three-year-old doesn't look at the body and think it's disgusting. Other people don't care at all. It does not actually mean I'm successful or not successful. It doesn't actually lead to that. You know, plenty of people with the right perfect kind of bodies that are not happy. People with not, you know, with imperfect, difficult, off-kilter bodies in some way or another that are having a very happy life. It does not go together. It does not seem to match. So I could not answer, is it absolutely true that this is repulsive and ugly and needs to be uh, shut down? No. Some people will still say yes. Like it's a religion. It is a religion. I know it's ugly. I know it. I know. I'm the one. I have heard it. I have seen it. I have been taught it. My mother told me so. I cannot question. It's the truth. I know what's ugly and what isn't. Okay, so I'm just saying. You might want to question. Just take a look. See what your real answer is. And it's okay if you say, yes, it's ugly. Question three is, how do you react when you believe it's ugly? Repulsive. Disgusting. Well, I mean, you know how you react. You go to town on how to solve this problem. I'm going to go on another diet. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to train. I'm going to brutal. I'm going to kill myself trying to make it the other way. I'm going to do everything I can in the world. I'm going to force myself and push myself. I will not be happy until that thing changes and becomes beautiful. Very, very stressful. If you're like me, you might even find that you want to control your food and eating so much that you force yourself to throw up. You know, it becomes so important to make sure that at least you're staying as close as possible to perfection, uh, that your just whole world becomes a ball of anxiety around that. So here's the amazing fourth question with the work. Who would you be without that story? Why did you want it to be perfect? Where did you learn that it was ugly? Why do you need it to be looking so good anyway? Like, let's question that, you know? Usually it's so other people will approve of you, love you, care about you, appreciate you. Do you really need that? Do you need someone else to care about you? Because of your body, because of your appearance. Who would you be without that story? This whole body story, who would you be without it? That it is ugly, that you're too fat, that you need to lose weight. People in the class, yesterday said, oh my God though, then I won't try to lose weight and I'll just stay the same forever and I'll start blowing up into even a bigger, heavier amount. I'll just eat whatever I want and everything in sight and I'll weigh even more. Now, people think that having hatred towards your body is the motive to keep you at least under wraps, at least looking semi-okay. You know, if I hate myself enough, at least I'll be manageably approved of. It's kind of a weird, it's kind of a weird approach. What if you loved yourself? What if you looked at that body part and you actually thought neutrally about it, or you could actually think it is beautiful? So I'll tell you what happened. I just, it took me 30 minutes of staring at my thighs and it suddenly dawned on me Texas Hill Country is a huge uh, draw in the United States for a beautiful part of the world, a very interesting part of the world where there's rolling gorgeous hills and a lot of wide open space. We don't look at Texas Hill Country and say, this should be flat and smooth and hard and, you know, like as flat as a hard sand or mud or a dried up lake. We don't say that. We wouldn't want that at all. We look at Texas Hill Country, bumps and hills and grooves and the natural way of the world as gorgeous. Gorgeous. Why do I look at this leg, this human leg as ugly and Texas Hill Country is gorgeous? Could I not see through the same eyes of love and acceptance? 
and I felt like a relaxation. I felt a sense of rest, a, a sense of being able to see just for a second. Doesn't mean it's gone all the time. I put on clothes sometimes and think, geez, change your clothes, you know. I have that. I have that appearance uh, critical way of being. It's very deeply conditioned, but it, that's okay, you know. It gives discernment. It kind of helps me be inspired for certain things. There's nothing wrong with it, but I do not have hatred for this body. And that's the thing to feel. Who would I be without the thought, that's ugly? What if I turned it around? That's actually beautiful. Do you feel more like accepting yourself and relaxing and being feeling the sweetness of this moment and feeling um, love for the way you eat and everything you've adapted to and what you've been trying to do if you love your body or if you hate your body? I always noticed when I hated the way I looked, I wanted to eat more and do weird things with food. When I began to love the way I looked, I relaxed and my eating wound up matching relaxed approach to the body, relaxed view of the body. I felt better. I ate less. Today, um, the wonderful Jeff Foster, who's such a sweet spiritual teacher, actually just put out this um, Carl Rogers quote that says, the great paradox of life is that once you accept yourself, you can actually change. You know, it's the lack of acceptance for the self that keeps you in this resisted, hateful place. So just try it on. If it's too difficult to stare at yourself in the mirror, like fully right there with a bathing suit on or naked, then just take one little part at a time. Just do it in your imagination first. Walk down the street feeling beautiful in this body. Treat the body like this magnificent thing that it is. And let's just see what happens if we feel unconditional, positive acceptance for this body rather than hatred. I think you'll find that it feels more natural, more exciting, more thrilling, and inspires you far more than hating yourself to calm yourself down, relax with food and eating, and not eat so much. Let me know how it goes. Take care.